Way back in the day, in the, from the 40s and the 50s, on top of uh, Hunters Point Hill, it was the black barber shops, black uh, uh, beauty shops, uh, everything was like black. Black movies, uh, uh, we had a lot of black businesses back then. And then all of a sudden you see that fade away. My name is Carla Tucker and my business is CLT Construction Services and I provide professional support services and administrative services to local contractors and for construction companies in the Bay Area. I decided to focus on Bayview area because it was where I'm from, it is where I'm from, and it's where I grew up. And I came back after being gone for over 15 plus years and I saw this redevelopment and building here and I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to be a part of what the changes that my community was undergoing so I could feel reconnected. I'm a second generation of my family, um, the Mabrys in Hunters Point. Um, my grandmother, both of my grandmothers and grandfathers moved from Texas up here to work into the shipyard. Raised my mom and my dad. Um, they were middle class families. Um, they worked in a shipyard and they bought homes over in the Bayview. I love the neighborhood. We grew up, you know, kids, innocent kids, just playing around. Me and all my friends, we played a lot of football. We went to school. Um, we focused a lot on what we would do when we grew up older because we, we grew up with nothing. You know, we didn't have any money, so that wasn't a, a, a thing that we was privileged to. So we always talked about how we can get some money. So. Growing up in the Bayview area was awesome because it was a community and the term, it takes a village, I felt like Bayview was a village. It was a village. We were raised not just by our parents, our family, we were raised by everybody in the community. Um, you go down the street and Miss Franklin, she would be like, okay, I got my eye on you. So everybody raised you. It was just great, you know, it was a very hilly community, you know, we skated and rode our bikes down these hills and um, knew all of the local merchants and it, they, they too were a part of our family. I trip off a lot of things, you know, like for instance now on Northridge, right, just growing up I used to jump them fences and stuff like that back in the days and now we up there painting them. So it's like, it blows me away because I can see myself through a little kid. I started your, your All Day Every Day Janitorial, my business, um, about 25 years ago, actually. Um, I used to hang out on, on a corner, me and my friends, and I had spoke with some other people and they had gave me some ideas like, hey man, do you know you can go down to City Hall and you can start a business for like $35? And I was like, start a business? Like, you can go actually get a business license for $35? I was like, are you kidding? I was telling my friends, I was excited, like, man, you know, we can start businesses. And they, they were like, man, you can't just start no business. I said, man, we live in America, man. Uh, a dream was built with a dollar and an idea. It's an economic boom right now, as far as, uh, especially as far as industrial and building. And we're trying to get the, uh, our young people have an advantage right now to go to get into the uh, union, get a trade, get a craft. And, and they are, uh, they're the ones that uh, get the benefit of this. And I wish some of the people uh, in the community could come out and don't be afraid of them and come out and, and talk to them and give them a more uh, uh, idea of where they can go. And, and growing up, we learned that I had an auntie who was an entrepreneur. My great grandmother was an entrepreneur. So the entrepreneurial skills was just, they were just there. It just became something that I had inherited just as a kid. Janitorial was one of the easiest business you could start. You know, all you need is a mop, a broom, a vacuum cleaner, a squeegee, and just the heart and will to get up every morning and go do a job. And if you do quality work, you'll be invited back. My job is to put paint where it ain't, to beautify the neighborhood anywhere. And that's what AJ is all about. And, in, and putting our people to work. I mean, I taught a lot of people in all the communities how to paint. We all used to work together, so they didn't seen changes. They know it's possible. I worked off and on for years and years, and 
with the history of being laid off all the time is when I decided, you know, I didn't want to be laid off anymore. And that's been my mission to let them know we're not just in business, you know, for the short haul, we're in it for the long haul. Once I opened this business, I just, you know, I put everything into it and I just put my, all my blood, sweat and tears, just, just hustle. You know, and I always, I wanted to show my friends in a neighborhood that we could be businessmen, that we were great businessmen, we just were in a great, in the wrong business for too long. So I took the idea and the concept of how we used to do things and just put it into this, and now I'm selling cleaning, and it works. The Bayview is such a, a, a different community because it's always been, we love each other. We might bicker like a family, but we always have loved each other. And it's a culture that comes from maybe uh, from the South. Uh, our parents brought this culture here. But you can never, anyone can say that uh, Baby Hunters Point was divided and couldn't come together. And if you define uh, the culture in Baby Hunters Point, you would kind of a uh, 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 love, an uh, everlasting love, you know, that we have here. And I think that it's going to always be that way. Now that I've come back, the personality of it for me is bittersweet. Because the gentrification or the regentrification is, is good, but at the same time, I still see um, parts of like my past that have gotten stuck. And they didn't you know it didn't evolve into where I thought it should be and I didn't see any help um, to help in that process uh, so it was it was disheartening for me and that's a real major um, part of me coming back because I want to have a part in helping my people who are still here in the community I want to be a part of helping them evolve I think that's important for my family being in the neighborhood so long, they named a, sh a court after our, our, our grandmother. Um, it was, it's called Mabry Court. And me being a second generation, um, it just makes me feel great to come back to the community after starting a business that so many people said I couldn't do um, and hire folks. So I, that makes me feel really good to be able to give them a foundation to build something from. Even if they don't want to be janitors or laborers for the rest of their lives, they can make enough money to maybe go to school at nighttime or on the weekends and to find out what they want to do as a career or start their own businesses. But definitely hiring and coming back to the community, giving jobs is a, a great feeling. My proudest moment as an entrepreneur has been hiring both of my sons um, full time to come to work for my company. Talking with my colleagues keeps me humble, keeps me focused. And seeing them do well inspires me to do better, you know, and then we just feed off each other. My biggest mentor since I've started my business has been Yolanda Jones of Y Cat C. She has been very um, instrumental in motivating me, inspiring me, and just you know, pushing me to get to the next level constantly, consistently, because there's been a lot of times where I just wanted to be like, you know, I'm just going to get my resume out again and start there. And she says, no, you keep going. No one knows what it's like to be an entrepreneur, but another entrepreneur. You are on the island by yourself. It's either you make it or you don't.